what do you think a Wookiee's first word is? It's uh, what the fuck? <laughs> what am I? Uh, oh, I'm so hairy. <laughs> Welcome to Tales from the Outer Rim, episode 21, where today we're going to be talking exclusively about Ahsoka and nothing to do with Wookiee births ever again. <laughs> um, what the hell? If you like content like that, like and subscribe to Tales from the Outer Rim on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> wow, that was like, you were like way too quick with that answer. At TFTOR pod on TikTok, at the Outer Rim pod on Twitter, at Tales from the Outer Rim on YouTube. Got anything else? <laughs> nope, nope, that's it. Please like, please like this. Like and subscribe, leave a comment on our sh nonsensical shenaniganery if you like this content. Jeez, man. Today, we're pretty much exclusively going to be talking about Ahsoka episodes one and two, aka Star Wars Rebels season five. Basically, yeah. Um, so let's just get right into it. Ahsoka episode one. Okay. Uh,. I got, I got to turn now. I got a new studio. I got to turn mm. to look at you. Um, so what was like, okay, first initial reaction, episode one, what was your, right after it was done, we watched it together, actually. He mm -hmm. came to my house. We're inside my house yeah. right now. And he came over. We watched it. After watching Mandalorian season two, that amazing ending with Luke, mm -hmm. um, what was your thought of Soka? this? This This show feels like Star Wars. It's... It has a different vibe than uh, the previous few things that Disney or that uh, Lucasfilm has put on Disney Plus. It's it it has more of a Star Wars vibe than Obi Wan, than Boba Fett, than Mando season three. It it just Andor. feels correct, you know. It feels it has the right vibes, and you can tell Dave Filoni. Is, had his hand in it, like pretty much everything that you're seeing on screen. It's just like it's Rebel season five. It feels like a continuation of Rebels, and it feels correct. Man, so you know you're a Star Wars nerd when as soon as that like first crawl like ha hit the screen, I was immediately like, oh my god, the crawl felt correct. Dude, I it mean, did. it and, did, and this is contrary to something that. Kathleen Kennedy, shockingly contrary to oh, something yeah, that Kathleen right. Kennedy has recently said, where she said, "You know, we we keep the crawl for movies." Shut up. <laughs> she's, she's, I yeah, she's I can't, so I can't blatant. even. Let's not talk about her because she sucks. So like that was so like right off the bat, like that whole beginning crawl, I was immediately like, "Wow, this just just feels so right." It's also kind of cool too. Obviously, Dave Filoni made this, yeah. So it reminds me of Clone Wars in, mm -hmm. uh, season seven. When as soon as it, it stopped, it went from like the, doo -doo -doo, you know, that amazing uh, intro that they have to just nothingness and then red. It's, it, this, this show signifies the changing of the guard between like the good guys are winning mm -hmm. to now the dark times are upon us. And I definitely feel that in this scroll. Well, it gives a lot of people who maybe are just tuning in now into Star well, Wars. Well, it gives a, yeah, a brief it, recap. for the normies, it's a good recap. And, uh, I mean, it's just a good recap for everybody, though, because it just puts, you know, it just tells you what the fuck's going on. You know, it yeah. gives you all the context you need to know that, um, you know, is only assumed that you need to have as pertinent information going into it. So it's good. It's just a good jumping off point. That's, I don't know. It's, it's good. Done, it's done well, too. I, I love read. I love it when I read these things and they always have, like, the evil galactic empire. The yeah, the evil agents. The adjectives that they use are incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's so just like I don't know how to explain it. It is definitely one of those things. It's like a nostalgia -y for me, especially uh, I when I was younger. I went to watch uh, Star Wars stuff in the movie theaters, mm -hmm. and it was always just like as soon as you know like and just yeah. reading the whole thing i mean obviously we wanted the movie to get started and i hated reading when i was a kid but now i look back on it and i'm like oh that was probably one of the coolest it's there's nothing i will always say there's nothing like seeing star wars in the movies and just that first like blare of the you know the horns like oh yeah. it's so great it's a good feeling so just get, to get it right off the bat this this two first two seconds of the show was already like had me like through the roof. Also, really quick, the Lucasfilm like intro, they changed it up a little bit. They added some droids, but this time usually it goes between like 
red and blue like hints of lights. Mm. It was just straight red. And yeah, uh, they I added mean, like Sabine Chopper, Hu Yang. Yeah, wasn't now it was. They also added a clone trooper in there too. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll get Rex. Who knows? <laughs> um, we, Rex confirmed. A boy can hope. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the right off the bat, awesome. I love the feeling of it. So let's just get into this. Will be sort of like a breakdown, but it'll also be kind of like just a general discussion of the of the entire show. So right off the bat, we got that intro. Okay. Right after the intro stops, they basically did A New Hope, where they mm-hmm. showed the the calamari, um, whatever, ship going underneath us. And did you know that that ship was the same uh, ship from A New Hope? Or, sorry, um, Return of the Jedi, when they're making all the plans and everything? Like, they, they oh. had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So hey, when I thought Hera, that was always on Home 1. No, no, no. That was it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so that was awesome. I like that. I mean, not only was it a New Hope callback, but it was yeah. like, you know, the, the main ship that they make it's bad all. that Captain got murked instantly. I know, kind of weird. <laughs> he was a little cocky, though. He needed it. Yeah, he needed to get uh, knocked down a couple of pegs. Place. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, him seeing a Jedi ship appear and they give old codes and him just be like sure come on come on to our ship and with this prisoner that was apparently a highly valued target enough to where they had actual humans watching her because how many times have we seen in this new star wars that they just have the new republic just has droids watching Mm -hmm. so like it's interesting to see this ship was obviously and obviously it's one of the their main ships in the entire you know their fleet they had them watching morgan elsbeth and then they just allowed this, these Jedi. To come. It was very odd to me. I was like, okay, fine. But it also like very. He got too cocky. He was like, ah, these aren't force wielders. Fuck them. But it, play, gonna, it know, plays. It was very like Star Trek. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna take care of these guys. You know, like yeah, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them courtesy, and then boom, gonna arrest them. I do enjoy the how they did the um the. Whatever you want to call, it. we need to we need a we need a word for uh, Ray Stevenson and uh, Shin Hadi's characters. They're Bing. not Sith. They're not uh, oh like that. You know, like the I don't know. We need a word for them. But the, like the I like Jedi. I like them having um, an action scene right off the bat, just like showing you. Okay, these guys don't That's fuck right. around. They literally just murder the entire crew of the yeah. ship, and they're like. Just to get Morgan Elsbeth out of there. So I think I'm curious, like, what the dynamic is. Like, is Morgan hiring them or are they like, I guess, okay, later Ray Stevenson is like, we're in this for the power, basically, yeah. is what he says. So I don't know if he's but like. But he also said he's paid well, too. In yeah. The- so I think it's both. I well, guess. Morgan Elsbeth is not paying them. It's somebody else is paying them. She's just, she's just with Thrawn because she asked them later on, like, uh, what are you doing? What was this for? Uh, obviously, you just said. But then Morgan Elizabeth's like, "Well, just keep going with the original plan that was given to you." So it's like, I, yeah. I think Thrawn is the one who's paying all of them. Or yeah, whoever. through somebody. Yeah. Maybe it's like the Empire, uh, the Imperial right Pellian. <laughs> Pelly, Pelly. He's keeping the books for dude, Thrawn. Fucking Pelly, dude. Probably, honestly, he's just sitting there like playing Monopoly with himself. Yeah. He's just like, one day I'll get out of jail. So. <laughs> Call back to like when we were watching season two of Mandalorian right before we watched this. We you could just tell there's a stark difference between the action and violence in that, and then the action and violence in Book of Boba Fett and Mando season three and Andor. But that violence is in Ahsoka. Absolutely, I don't think it's necessary. I think it is kind of necessary, honestly, because like when they're slaughtering that group of people, I don't want to see them like doing it off screen like they do it in a cool way like where Balin like looks at some dude in the eye while he acts activates the lightsaber through his chest and shit well, it's also it's great like, it's cool to see that it was i mean the whole thing so they they get off their ship and obviously it was very uh reminiscent of when Darth Sidious got off his ship in uh, Empire Strikes Back with all mm-hmm. the, you know, that, anytime a cool character gets off their ship, just that, you know, yeah, the, the smoke steam, of, like dude, the hydraulics, is, uh, just like releasing. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a good sound, man. Yeah, I love that. That is great. It, but you gotta, you gotta think too. So while they say they're not Jedi, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to how what Shin Shin has a uh, a Padawan. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting that yes. they're like, they don't. 
they don't consider themselves Jedi, but they're not Sith either. And Ray, Balin Skull is like a former master, and he still has respect for the Jedi. It well, seems she's like. like it seems like he's teaching her the ways of the Jedi yeah. too, while also being able to get things done in ways that like how Ahsoka gets things done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I mean he's he's obviously like a full blown mercenary out for power, right? Yeah. But he's also like he shows remorse later when he's like. Mm, it's a shame that we have to kill Ahsoka. There aren't many Jedi left, and everybody's like, "Huh?" <laughs> well, he's like, "I respect her." <laughs> you know, like he's like, he respect. He still respects Jedi. It seems like, and is willing to like take certain elements, like the way uh, he built a lightsaber and stuff like that. He teaches Shin how to do that, and obviously, just like being a a sword wielder and things right. like that like but he it seems like he has like this like low-key respect for the jedi ways which i think is fun and interesting it's it's a different aspect instead of just like a classic sith lord like fuck the jedi you know like, that's what i'm saying so i think it's cool that he did when he showed up to the captain i think that captain would have just been kind of would have been chill they, they, they nobody would have died but the thing is balin literally said like hey uh, i I'm willing to give you a chance here. Mm -hmm. And then he kills him, right? So mm -hmm. it's not like he didn't get, like, unlike most Sith would have just walked in there and started. He's a very, people. he's very uh, willing to, like, parlay and bargain with people, it seems like. It was super also, I didn't get to put this in my, in my notes for it, but it, every single part of this beginning was a callback to something. Like, it reminded me of a, of a Phantom Menace when Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan show up to mm -hmm. the, to the, uh, whatever, the Trade Federation ship. Like, it was super cool. It was just really awesome to see that. And then we can get into the kick-ass motion where Shin and him are, Shin and Balin are just slicing people up. Mm -hmm. uh, Balin gets his own um, uh, hallway scene, and that was badass. Like, and even more into the callbacks when uh, when he goes and opens up the, the locks for uh, Morgan Elsbeth, uh, immediately, you know, he does the whole releases her out of the thing i was like oh yeah it's like dark city is when he's like oh yes relax luke relax <laughs> take a take a step back and opens up his thing and falls to the ground it's such i will say that they pay such attention to that like that little thing because in every one of the legends books there's always like a scene or something where they're always like and then he unlocked the, 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 his, his handcuffs and they fell to the ground and they make like a, and it's the hissing sound that you hear so that's kind of cool you know like dave filoni's always into wanting to it's like poetry you know? it rhymes yes so <laughs> i mean i know it's a small detail but it, it matters so they get morgan elsbeth off the ship and it was it was a bad they did miss an opportunity and i'm stealing this from uh from screen crushes breakdown mm -hmm. like when balin and morgan elizabeth are walking out and balin's like there's a jedi what's what's the jedi's name and then she says ahsoka and then they walk off screen and the then the ahsoka thing shows up on screen it should have been like what's that jedi's name and then it should have been the boom ahsoka <laughs> you know like that would have been <laughs> that's that like been. um Oh, what is it? Who, what show? Yeah, Invincible, Invincible does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been a really cool way to introduce this like show because that was like that would have been funny. That was <laughs> badass, really. So then we get to uh, we get to Ahsoka going into the. the she moons. goes and steals the apple of Eden. Oh, dude, that whole thing. So I was geeking out. That was an Assassin's time. Creed ass uh, puzzle thing that I she mean, was doing. It was it was it was that, but yeah. it was also just so related to jedi fallen order jedi uh survivor mm -hmm. and in the in the ways of how the architecture was very zepho like and how all these ancient types of you know uh, people in this universe are all kind of connected in a way right because you see the architecture what i thought looked like the father you know the daughter and the, the son right Mm -hmm. Where it looked like that kind of architecture, but mixed in with uh, Night Sister magic, because uh, we find out later in episode two, or sorry, later on in this episode, we find out Morgan Elizabeth is a Night Sister, but she also says that the place that Ahsoka was at was a Night Sister like I, shrine. Yeah, I love how we're getting like Night Sister lore. It's oh, yeah. um, and that they have they at one point had the ability to like travel between galaxies. I guess like. Because that's what that is. It's a star map of the galaxy, right. like a intergalactic travel, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, 
And she's a force. She's like a straight up force. I mean, all the dark night sisters are like dark side force. It's like a different like yeah, sect of dark side yeah. force wielding, right? But she it's witchcraft. Yeah, she like straight up does some like force wielding, like on the, the on the thing, like when she, when she's like activating the map. Right. I don't know. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I love all the dark sister uh, night sister stuff that's obviously in Clone Wars, but mm-hmm. also we get to see a little bit of it in. Again, Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi uh, Survivor. It's such a cool. It's so different, but it's the same. You know, mm. it's basically like getting a different. If you really like Slurpees, it's basically getting like a different type of Slurpee and being like, mm. "This is like the regular Slurpee, but it's different." Why don't you have a Coke one? And I like it with that. And maybe you mix them together. You know, all, mm-hmm. all a little bit of Coke, a little bit of cherry. And you're yeah. like, wow. It's like wow. poetry. It rhymes. Wow, it's <laughs> delicious. So I really like. I really like that, but. To get into like the Ahsoka part, like <laughs> it's kind of funny too. I saw this meme online that before she went underground, she knelt down and saved her game. <laughs> oh, is like, that like a meditation spot? <laughs> I actually have that in my um in my notes where I say Jedi meditation spot when Ahsoka is first introduced. But yeah, as soon as they get into that tomb, dude, it was immediately Assassin's Creed vibes. You yeah. see the apple of Eden everywhere. She gets an apple of Eden. I was like, dude, she's about to. There's about to be like an assassin tomb. She's about to push over something, and there's gonna be like mm. money. Money's gonna appear on the plus two thousand euros. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was so ready for that. But it was exactly like Star Wars Survivor with a lot of the puzzles and stuff. And it also really reminded me how George Lucas that all felt. What was it? Um, one of the, some of the Indiana Jones. It felt really Indiana Jones. Yeah, time, right? there was definitely some Raiders of the Lost Ark shit going on, like the Temple of Ra type of thing. Um, there was one, this was like one of the parts that I didn't like, which is very few things. Uh, <laughs> there's like one part where she jumps out of the hole of that uh. after, and it like makes a whoosh noise. And I was like, I don't you think, like the food. no, I was like, <laughs> when they're like jumping around in the prequels and stuff, I don't think they make whoosh noises. <laughs> I, I, it just like pulled me out for a second, but it's like a very small, uh. it's like a very nitpicky thing. Okay. I was just like, that was weird. <laughs> um, well, then she kicks ass with some with some droids. I love her yeah. fighting style, where she's literally surrounded by all those people. It looks like she jumps back in the hole mm-hmm. and then digs holes underneath them to get to separate the two levels. I mean, I don't know. Apparently, those droids can't jump high. So yeah, they, they don't have any there. hops. No, they, they're like, well, they're, actually, they do because they come back in those last two uh, self destruct. So they oh, do. Th- yeah, those things had like nukes. They reminded What's me of uh, like the. The super mutants in Fallout 4 oh. that carry the new one. Like, oh, dude. the sentry bots, dude. Those sent when after you kill them, they immediately blow up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, Lord, yeah. Those things suck. It was like a literal, like, Stressful. massive nuclear explosion when all those HK assassins droids blew Good up. Good thing she knew, man. Good thing she knew to just keep running. Because, yeah. gosh, that thing, like, that thing incinerated the entire ruins. So then just you get... ruined three million years of just ancient ruins in two seconds, right? Yeah. Who sent, who sent those? It was uh, Morgan Elsbeth, right? that sent those um no i think those are i think those are balan's balan and uh, balan's got a lot of crew he's got he's got shin hottie he's got merrick um and then he's got like they have like seems like dozens of hk assassins right where they're they're coming from yeah they they got they got a decent amount of boys um yeah then they go uh after ahsoka gets this map she then goes and uh, we we meet Hugh, Hugh Yang. Is that yeah, his name? Hugh Yang, Hugh Professor Yang. Hugh, Hugh Yang comes and picks her up in the Jedi ship. I think it's it's a Jedi like cruiser, right, or whatever. I don't yeah, know. it was one of the original Jedi cruisers, but like it seems like everybody cruiser. had not cruiser, it's like a shuttle, a shuttle, shuttle whatever. Ship. Yeah. But everybody, every like Jedi Republic officer had one mm-hmm. prior. It's just now it seems kind of original because you now obviously all of them got destroyed. So Hugh Yang is like Ahsoka's second, like. Like companion, Basically. traveling companion, which is so cool. Like I, w- I want to know how they met up. How like that happened. Yeah, where where did she find him? Did she, was he just chilling at the Jedi Temple? Like what? I don't know. Where I want to know how he came about because he, I think, is my favorite character so far. Just the the fact that he like is able to like later she, he analyzes some like holograms and deciphers like. He's like, yep, I taught this. I taught somebody how to uh, make this lightsaber exactly yeah. the way it's. You know, it's he's really cool. 
Um, so He's yeah, basically like your your lore giver without needing any like yeah, that's the other thing. Like it. it's and it's also really, I love the 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 characters that kind of give you exactly what you're thinking as like an audience member because mm-hmm. you know later on he has a conversation with Sabine about. You know, Sabine's like questioning herself and being like, "Oh, I mean, I suck at this." And he's like, "Yeah, you do. You're absolutely yeah. terrible." But the thing is, if you worked on these things, you wouldn't be terrible. Did and you? It's exactly what Caden was telling her. Yeah. Like, the entire time. Did you? Okay, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but did you? When he was telling her that, did you get the vibe that it's like, oh, okay, she's not a force wielder? No, I get. I got the feeling that she just doesn't. She's. She's very closed off because she's a Mandalorian and they, they have a hard time letting being open minded about certain aspects of things. Like if mm-hmm. they don't feel like they can't do something, then that's just it. They're really good at doing things they know they can do, right? So it's like that's why they had one of the most powerful Jedi of all time where was like the leader of Mandalore, you know? So do you think but that in, like throughout the season we're gonna see her unlock the force ability? Yeah, I think that they, I think it's gonna be basically the same keep on bringing up this fucking game because it's so very connected to it. Like, it's going to be the same way Cal Kestis gets these certain abilities, which, by the way, Ahsoka used Force Echo. Yeah. She was feeling, like, the the ruins. She heard their memories, kind of like an audio log in a way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I thought that was She cool. did it a couple times, actually. She did it at the end of this episode, too. But I, I think in the same way that Cal regains his Force abilities, I think it's going to be the same way that Sabine kind of has like she she's basically at the beginning starting level of like <laughs> your jedi at these games right like she can you, she can swing a lightsaber she has the basics down but other than that you know she's not dual wielding you know what i mean mm-hmm. so you're gonna i think and it's gonna be the same growth within ahsoka being able to fulfill sabine's training and also see the growth in both of them right and i think that that's a really cool it's a really cool aspect because we really don't get to see that in um in forms of like people who maybe weren't so force sensitive we see mm-hmm. a lot of that in like you know people who are super uh, oh this guy is just untapped potential you know and it's like sabine has that but on the opposite end where she's like very trained up in like combat wise but doesn't have that in the force abilities mm-hmm. and that's the most um hardest thing that's like the most difficult thing for like ahsoka it reminds me of like help people Legend of Korra, where like Korra is good at um, like bending, but not the spirit aspect of being uh, the yeah, avatar. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think there's a parallel there. I'm, I think I'm on the fence. I don't know if they're gonna do the Force thing with Sabine. I think they could do like cool payoffs with her, like training with Ahsoka without her being a Force wielder. So, but on the other hand, I think obviously her being a Force wielder would be really cool. So I think either way, it'll be cool so i'm here for it either way um yeah so we get back they uh soka with this to take it back to where we were getting to the the episode we go back ahsoka is still going by fulcrum to the republic the republic calls her back to that main ship again mm -hmm. the i think it was home one yeah whatever they go back to that ship home one is sick seeing home one is so freaking awesome. awesome that's what i'm saying they had that meeting in the same place that luke and them found a way to destroy the death star again yeah like that is so awesome like just, it's those little things you don't even really notice it if you don't like look around mm-hmm. you know i watched it twice so like i kind of got the, an opportunity to like pause it and not be so like in the moment and it it's so cool how many little things they put in this show for the the star wars fans like yeah, obviously they want a wide variety of people like watching this. They want them to all be astounded by this show. Mm-hmm. But man, this is exactly what I was talking about a couple weeks ago where I was saying like I think this show is going to go so deep for us Star Wars fans that we're just going to be like sold, you know? Like every single episode is going to be like, "Wow, cuz we have so much more that we have a couple videos that we've been putting out too during the week, but like this is just such a it's a breath of fresh air that it seems like they're finally giving us Star Wars fans what we want. Yeah, you're definitely getting, it seems like, way more if you've seen Rebels. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're just not getting, 
I feel like you're getting the very surface level of good content if you've never seen anything else with Star Wars and you're jumping in. Like, it's still great. Like, I feel like people would still be entertained yeah, by this show, but it's just like you're missing so much more. There's just so yeah, much more. You'll, you'll get you'll get a lot more things. But I um, also have in my notes here that, like, I love this the entry into the actual ship itself. Mm-hmm. Like, just uh, it, it zooms in from POV of Ahsoka and Hu Yang. That's how you say it, right? Hu Yang. Hu Yang, the, her droid. And then it zooms back out to show her ship, like, entering the actual uh, home one. Mm-hmm. And, man, I, I don't know why. I just, I just, just love it. such a nothing scene, yeah, but just, like, yeah. satisfying as hell. I just love it because they don't. Yeah. Man, it's been so missing. I And I this is what I complained about a lot with Andor, where it just didn't feel so, like, it was, like, too down to earth for me. That like I wanted this like I just wanted the simple like ships where they enter the zone they come back out and it's with these droids and when they come when they get off the ship you see all like the the rebel squadron people walking around mm-hmm. and then you see Hera and it's just it, it just felt right I don't know how to explain it, it just felt it feels right like to Star me. Wars I don't know. yeah yeah it felt um, like home yeah <laughs> and, like, home one yeah it felt like home one <laughs> um. <laughs> So, yeah, Ahsoka reunites with Hera in that meeting, and then she's like, you should go f- talk to Sabine. She put, she might know what this Apple of Eden thing means. And then we get Sabine. Well, hold on. Hold on. Before we zoom over that, we got to talk about how when Ahsoka and Hera are talking, apparently they haven't talked in, like, a little bit here. Yeah. And the, the whole, whole reason why even uh, Ahsoka came to her in the beginning was, like, hey, we... Well, a to warn them about possibilities of Thrawn, but also secondary, like, hey, Ezra, like, but we might have found a way to find Ezra. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I have, I have in my notes, the mention of Ezra did get me emotional. Like when I saw Hera, when mm-hmm. she went, Ahsoka, as soon as Ahsoka mentioned, like, hey, this might, we might be able to find Ezra, and Hera was like, really? <laughs> I was, I was right there with them. I was right there with her. I was like, oh my god. That's your boy. That's yeah. your son. That's like, my, my boy. <laughs> um, like, I was just so into it, man. And it was so, like, I don't know. Again, it's one of those little things where you're not going to get, if you haven't watched Rebels, and you're not going to get the significance of why they would care. And it's so, and especially right after that, Hera's like, if you tell Sabine that it's about Ezra, she'll do it. Mm-hmm. You know, she won't do it if you give a, about anything else. But, goddamn, yeah. you tell her about Ezra, you know, so that was really cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like we go back to Lethal, right? And the shots on Lethal are amazing. Yeah. They look just very aesthetically pleasing, like uh, pretty much this whole show. That city's awesome looking. Like, yeah, man, it was already cool looking. We didn't really, we didn't get then, to see rebuilt Lothal at the end of Rebels. All we saw was just the background of it. It looks very much like uh, Cloud City, yeah. and also um, like Alderaan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah vibes um anyway so we get clancy brown as live action writer as Adi, which i had di- i did not see coming at all which was cool. so cool. cool um and then it wasn't needed but cool <laughs> yeah so there was like that funny scene with him where he's like and here's sabine to talk about this rebels mural and she was not there obviously and then he just like pushes jai kel who is also in rebels is like ezra's friend who's now the senator from lothal <laughs> he's like go talk he's like, dude i was literally like, cover for I me i guess that i like I guessed who that was, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, is that is that the Ezra's friend That's, from the yeah, Empire? Yeah, it's Prince Zuko. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, voice wait a actor. Second. That was neat. again cool, really cool, small things. Yeah, that just good callbacks. If you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah. So that was awesome. Okay, let's just get into like Sabine's introduction. If and this was this is probably the coolest introduction to a character mm-hmm. that I think Star Wars has ever done. Because I mean. I'm very biased because I love like I love hardcore like rebel music like I'm talking like the we don't give a you know I love that sort of thing so mm-hmm. the fact that she was riding her bike her motorcycle basically down that down that Lothal hall like highway to nothing and just rocking out and all the authorities are like you gotta pull over and she's like I ain't even listening it was just so cool yeah. man that's so like they they nailed ass. her and. Natasha Lou Bordizzo, I think is how you say it. She nails it as Sabine. Um, it's kick ass, it's, man. It's perfect. The she, music that was playing, perfect. Mm, yeah. And so, yeah, she like is punking out and 
get, running away from the cops and shit. <laughs> so then dude, she, and then that then I mean I know we saw it in the trailer a bunch, but when when they dropped that ship in front of her mm-hmm. and they were both like, she's not stopping, huh? she ain't gonna stop. And then she goes underneath it. I'm like, dude, bad ass for anybody who's never watched Rebels, like. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, I I, I really want to ask somebody who hasn't watched Rebels before and be like, "What did you think of that introduction?" Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I just think that perfectly sums up this this Rebel. She's the she is the Rebel. Yeah, she's so, great. It was awesome. You got, I also when I was watching one of these breakdowns on her uh, helmet, it says Rebel Babe. Nice. <laughs> it's like that's awesome, dude. Uh, it's kick ass, man. Uh, awesome introduction to this character. Um, so yeah, she's runs away from the cops and then she goes and we find out she's living in Ezra's old room in the, that whatever that tower is, that like space needle in the middle of the, like, well, with all planes. Um, and then she like presumably watches that uh, hologram of Ezra every single day. Um, with yeah. her loath cat, she literally yeah, has she's a got a loath cat. cat. Oh, loath cat is so cute. Loath cat's cool, and then if you, the background is really cool because there's so many Easter eggs from Rebels, like the uh, the scout trooper helmet that Ezra wears that he painted. All his whole helmet, all the helmets are in the background. Um, obviously, she's got his lightsaber and her Mandalorian armor and stuff in there, which she doesn't put on until the very end of se- the episode two. But still, I'm looking forward to seeing her like kick ass in her mandalorian armor again yeah um yeah did you, did you notice anything else in her room like that was from rebels other than uh, the helmets and stuff well i think the significance of the helmets are like obviously with with ezra and it's it's kind of a funny callback too because like obviously ezra wore them in a bunch of different scenarios mm-hmm. but like he was actually like an ad he wasn't just getting them just to like oh i need this for like special you know uh, moments like he's like oh man i don't have that helmet yeah like, he was legitimately like he was a collector of, of star wars helmets yeah so it's so he he was fanboying yeah in, in the actual very universe. meta yeah so it's hilarious that she has that like she set them up in the background like how collectors would do so it's it's, it's just kind of cool kind of funny stuff uh, I don't think I really saw anything. I mean, they had a little bit of like she definitely added a bunch of like random little artwork stuff around the whole place, so, and you could see that like on the walls when the loath was. But later on, when Ahsoka comes back, you could like get a close in look like how the entrance looks, and mm-hmm. there's like a bunch of like little um, like loath cats. There's like a bunch of wolves all over the place, and I think that was uh, that was really cool. Uh, so yeah. Also, I gotta gotta mention this. Huh? What? <laughs> when when she goes over the hologram, and Ezra's like, "I love you like a sister." I was like, oh, "Does no. he say that?" He does. He says he says like, "I love you." Uh, He's like, "I love you like a sister." Well, that's bullshit because he is uh, in he love was, with her. Yeah. Well. I, yeah. I mean, he liked her a lot, but I I've always wanted to see Ezra and Sabine. I thought that that was something that should have happened, and it looks like he was heading towards it. So, but when he says, I love you, we're like family, you're like my sister. I was like, oh, I literally put my notes. Sabine X Ezra is in jeopardy right now. <laughs> like, we may not get that kiss. We well, don't know what's going to happen. I think the reason that's not going to happen is because Ezra's dead. <laughs> Dude, no, stop. If, if, okay. If he's and, not uh, dead, okay. The only time, the only thing that I would like is if he's not dead and if he's not like a full blown bad guy, like working for Thrawn. I would love it if he's Thrawn's prisoner and he's just like fucked up. Like oh, he is like, that. did you ever play Gears of War two? Yeah, I know. Where you he's know. like tie. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> want that dude. No, where he's just like no, totally not even no, recognizable. No. He's like a changed. He's not the old Ezra anymore. He's Jeez, just man. fucked. Okay. I don't want that. Um, what I want is Ezra to be some like, I want him literally to be doing some Aladdin type shit. Like over in like a the, the city over from where Thrawn's at, and he's just like they find him. He's doing basically the same things that like they originally like found him on Lord Paul doing. He's mm-hmm. like, hey guys, can't get off this planet because nobody because ships weren't invented yet. So like, kind of just stuck here. I would, and then they he's like, wow, Sabine's gonna be like, oh, you're so tall now, and he's gonna be like, oh yeah, you got you got a booty, and then they're gonna love each other. Was it the end of the episode where Sabine gets stabbed? Yes. Okay, so yeah, like at the end of the episode they 
uh, HK droids and Shin Hadi show up and steal the Apple of Eden from Sabine. She f- has a lightsaber, cool lightsaber fight with um, Shin Hadi. She gets her ass kicked, though. Um, and then she gets stabbed, and we have another example of a character getting stabbed by a lightsaber and not dying, which Only is... Only Qui-Gon Jinn was born There's so many good memes. years later. So many good memes <laughs> about Qui-Gon, like, watching from heaven, where it's like, uh, that, like, Indian dude where he's like, <laughs> he's Qui-Gon yeah, looking Qui-Gon. at all, all these characters getting stabbed and living. <laughs> If only it, it, so, it stabbed them through the spine. That's what happened. She got stabbed through a point where you can get shot at through the side. Maybe she only lost a kidney or something. That's probably it, but it can it can regrow yeah. in the Star Wars universe. Mandalorians are basically they so don't die. Qui Gon's death is continually getting shit on, <laughs> but it's not a big deal. Maybe um, he wanted to die. He was just ready to go. So they steal the fucking apple. And it's kind of nice to see the bad guys actually, like, succeeding here. Yeah. Um, so they steal the apple, bring it back to Morgan, and what I don't know what planet um, that they bring it to, where the map is, but... Uh, they're on Arcania. They're on Arcania. Arcania. I, I don't know if they're... I don't think it's. I don't think it's Dathomir. I don't think it is. Because Dathomir looks way more fucked up, and it's foggy, and there's no. I don't think there's any. Yeah, I was gonna say no oceans or like nice looking trees. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, but obviously this is some like Dathomir or like Night Sister ruins or whatever. Now I think about it, it kind of looked like um, uh, Mustafar that we saw in the Rise, where remember in the beginning where Kylo Ren was killing all those like those people to get to Vader's castle to mm. acquire that like map thing that that it reminded me of that forest a little bit it's probably not but yeah. like either way it did remind me of that like scene at least the background did and i doubt that's Mustafar cuz there's no lava but like so, um, it remind me of that so she they have like a little powwow the bad guys and Morgan Elspeth activates the the star chart which shows intergal intergalactic travel <laughs> um yes so and apparently thrawn and ezra were not so i'm confused about this because the unknown regions are a part of the galaxy it's just like a part that it can't be explored or can't be like traveled with hyperspace but this so, map goes to a different galaxy yes so, so like the unknown regions apparently were like there was a giant war or something. Like yeah, happened. or no, I think it was like a a natural disaster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. well, legends. Like a but big now, bang type of incident happened or some that's shit. That's legends, but now at least with the New Republic books, mm-hmm. they described it as there was like a war and then there was like an incident, some massive yes. like nuclear then something happened, weapons of mass destruction type Basically, shit. Basically, that's okay. what happened. So. But so like. We were always thinking that like Ezra and Thrawn were jettisoned into the unknown regions, but here Morgan Elsbeth is saying that Thrawn's location is in this other galaxy, which is interesting. So, their and their their goal right now, the bad guys are building this massive ship with like multiple hyperdrives, so they can travel to this other galaxy and go and get Thrawn and bring him back, presumably to get the Imperial Remnant together. Which who we saw in the Shadow Council, the only good scene from Mandalorian season three, okay. where the Shadow Council scene, where so he's probably going to get them back together and rebuild the Empire, and the New Republic is going to be fucked because they've de- demilitarized. Yeah, they're they're idiots. We kind of got parts of these confused. Uh, what's it called? Shin? Oh, actually, no, we didn't. But yes, that exact part that you're talking about, where we get to see just that like it's so it's like i think if you're not used to this sort of thing in star wars Mm -hmm. like and not a lot of people are because they haven't played the games and haven't read like the books and stuff i think this is their first introduction to this type of like um i don't know because it's like you kind of get it in episode two where we're showing like the maps and we're seeing like Oh, this is the this is. The, are you saying people are too dumb for maps? Uh, no, I'm saying that it's it's something new that we haven't seen. I think that it's cool that we're able to that we're introducing oh. a lot of people to this, mm. and I think that that this should be 
I think I think a lot of this like showing the galaxy and having interesting ways of like activating ancient maps mm-hmm. and like showing different parts of like how space travel is done because yes. it's such it's such a um I don't know a trivial thing now in all like forms of like you know uh, entertainment that it's never like really explained like how they zoom from a portal from one point to the other so it's mm-hmm. interesting to see now like oh these, some explanation things, yeah. as to like how space travel works and things like that yeah. and that's kind of sort of what the purgle do that that's like teased in rebels and yeah. mandalorian now we're getting like hopefully we'll get some like real like lore on how people like studied purgle and like created hyperspace yes. travel that'd be cool that's why that's why i say like i think that that's really cool it is cool and then immediately after that yeah. after they unlock this map sort of thing uh balen's like uh go finish the job <laughs> sabine <laughs> like just go just go kill her <laughs> like um no she goes he sends her to um to that point to go help merrick on corellia oh uh, no they kill they kill they, like sabine uh, has that fight Oh, well, that was before the map thing. Uh, I don't, I don't know, but I think they send her. No, because Sabine had the key to the map. Oh, okay. Then I don't know why I have this. In. Oh, yeah, I put this on after. You're right. You're right. But can um, we go back to that Shin versus Sabine fight really quick? Yeah, sure. Like, yeah. You got some, uh, some stance porn for oh, us. Oh man, it was so cool. I don't know why I thought this was before. I have it mixed up in my notes. Why? So anyway, um, man, Shin versus Sabine in their lightsaber fights. Mm-hmm. Like there is. Two things, two two reasons why Sabine lost her fight. <laughs> first reason, she sucks at lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, fight. first reason, she only uses Form One, which is one of the hardest to master because you're not supposed to master it. And like, it's secondly, it's just a basic ass fucking lightsaber stance. So she and she looks super uncomfortable too, probably because she wasn't training in it for a while. Secondly, Shin was using Form Six. And it's basically Anakin and all the Sith use Form Six because the most the, the most aggressive. You actually play zero defense because you're putting your uh, your opponent on defense, so you don't gotta do anything with it. That's why she kind of failed a lot when Sabine was able to parry with her and like push her back a tiny bit. But the main second reason, Sabine was trying to fight her like a Jedi. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, what was the thing that Kanan told her? Like. Motherfucker, or not Kanan, um, what's it called? Uh, Finn Rao. Finn Rao told her, like, fight them how we fight them. Mandalorian style. Mm-hmm. She didn't have her armor on, so I give her that. Like, she was, it's like Batman without prep time. Like, she didn't have any prep to get into this battle. Yeah, she got swamped for if sure. If she would have had her armor and she would have had her, like, little lasso thing was able to fight her, I think that she, it would have been a more even fight. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she would have won. But either way, the lightsaber fighting was just so much fun to watch, and it was really cool. I was geeking out the entire time. I really paused it a bunch of times. I'm like, if you look here and you look at her feet and how her stance is being pushed on, when Shin goes and pushes her, she moves back two steps, indicating that she will move up to the forward stance. And I was like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, give it to me. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Dave Filoni giving us that it wasn't just random fight like that we get in the stupid fucking sequels with like in um in rise because that seems to be the only like big lightsaber fight that we get like when it was kylo ren versus ray on that uh on the death star like mm-hmm. there was zero fucking forms in that like there was just they were basically just throwing sword it wasn't even like regular sword battling in that it was just hitting each other in this it was two, like, well, one very untrained person in it, but more trained than the regular. Mm-hmm. But Shin versus her, which was very well done, very good in my opinion. It may not be the best for, like, everybody who watches that sort of thing, but, like, I liked it. It was cool to me. And that's all I have for, like, this first episode, right? Then it ends, right? Because mm-hmm. after we see Sabine gets, like, stabbed through, they steal the whole... They steal the key, the Apple of Eden, and... Uh... So the second episode opens up with um, them opening the key, and she's Morgan Elizabeth does all the Night Sister thing and opens up the map. Um, so then Sabine's in the hospital, um, and then I think we get cut to Ahsoka, who is um, she talks with Hu Yang, and he tells her that's when he deciphers the um, the lightsaber, and he 
is able to figure out that Balin Skull was a Jedi who survived Order 66 because he was like, I, you know, I have been teaching Jedi how to make lightsabers like this forever, you know. Yeah, well, he says 500 years. But I think the, that's, but I, but I, I think he. I watched the, um, the Clone Wars episodes that he was in, mm. and he literally talks about helping Yoda find his first lightsaber. It's more than 500 years. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think I think you you're either misremembering that or there there's a gap in lore there. No, um, no, no, like he says he says he's been doing this for 500 years, but I'm saying that like I when I went we re, yeah. uh, watched the Clone Wars episode this morning with him in it. He specifically states that he I'm, has been doing it for thousands of years. Yeah. And also he found or helped yoda find his first lightsaber crystal so that's maybe he was just saying he's been teaching this specific way of building yeah, lightsabers yeah. for 500 years um because on the wiki it says he was built twenty five thousand years before the I battle of yavin really which know. is cool as hell he's only he only has he still has 75 percent of his original parts though well we'll see when uh james mangold movie comes out <laughs> if he's not in this movie, um <laughs> <laughs> no, but you brought up a good point that he could be in the acolyte. Oh yeah, yeah which yeah. would be freaking awesome because yeah, I would love to see him just be a presence throughout like everything and just observing how like all, I don't know. I think I think that's really that's a re- he's a really good character and he's a good way to just give exposition on the Jedi Order and yeah. like more lore and it's great. I don't know. He knows every Jedi. <laughs> Yeah, he is, and including Dogface, he taught Dogface how to make his lightsaber. And when they reunite with Dogface, him and Hu Yang are gonna have a little powwow, and they're gonna play cards together on the ship. I'm sure they were um, best friends. I'm sure Dogface, who's like 18 feet, yeah, dog definitely face. hangs out outside no, of swamps. Dogface is way taller. Um, <laughs> dogface probably has his own indoor swamp. Yeah, that's why you don't see him. He's still in the swamp. He's also on he was Dagobah. On Dagobah. <laughs> um, a giant. He was the snake that was trying to like <laughs> suck up things inside the the Imperial Star Destroyer and the New Hope. He was that little snake that was inside the trash compactor. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's to... dog face. That, dog face. <laughs> <laughs> that um. Okay, can we talk about the the Ahsoka giving Sabine the the most the best worst bombastic side eye of all time? Like, yeah, which, Ahsoka's a huge bitch uh, to oh Sabine in this God. episode. Oh, I had um, to, I had to go back and watch that moment again. When they're really not communicating S- well. Sabine gets up from like her fucking uh, I don't know, her chromatose state after getting stabbed. <laughs> She's like, "Sorry, I lost that." Ahsoka's like, "Yeah, maybe it's best if you don't help anymore." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my God!" The the look of disgust that was. That was, wow. I mean, people people aren't super sold on Rosario Dawson being Ahsoka, including but, myself. But um, like, man, that was the that was some good ass acting right there. Because I was like, damn, that's bogus as hell. That was bogus. That was not worth it. That was, jeez. I was like, the oh. two people, and this might be just because of the species their characters are. The two people that were the least convincing to me were. Um, Hera and Ahsoka. Like, I, live action Ahsoka has always been like, I'm like, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not really, it doesn't really remind me of Ahsoka. They seem like two different characters, and that's how I was feeling about Hera, too, a little bit. Like, it grows on me as I'm watching it. I'm like, it's not a huge deal, but that's just how I felt. In this episode, Hera was a little bit better, I think. Um, you get more classic Hera, and I think it's just because she was interacting with Chopper a lot. You yeah. didn't get any Chopper in episode one, but. Episode two is heavy on Chopper, and I loved it. <laughs> I think your problem with Hera is that she is very like professional when she's not next to like her her family or in that like different things. But I totally got the emotional connection when she was talking with Sabine after that and was like, mm. "Hey, maybe you know you did good. You know, it's just it's you and Ahsoka are both very similar. So like you both gotta figure it out." And I was. I felt that it was it was really nice uh, emotional connection that I got there too, and we also obviously see her other with her other kid Chopper, <laughs> and when they are inside the ship together, we see that interaction. I don't know. I like how they interact with each other, but I totally get the Ahsoka thing. I'm not quite used to her being so no. serious. 
just because it's like we watched seven seasons of her be this like wide eyed kid and like, mm. you know, she had to obviously grow up quickly. And I and I understand that she's not a kid. She's literally like fifty. Yeah. And like I understand. So that's kind of the part for me where it's like maybe I just don't like that kind of character. But you know, and I it's yeah. gonna, like she needs to get back and I think that's what Sabine's gonna give her. Give her that like uh, I don't know. Give her her pizzazz back. I think that's mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm looking at because there's a lack. She's of a little pizzazz. too serious. Yeah. Um. So untrusting. That being said, about the Harris stuff, like I do think the substance of the character is still in the writing, though. Mm. Um. And I'm reading this review a little bit here, and it brings up a good point. Um. Is that Hera is like the one who's healing the rift between Sabine and Ahsoka, um, and she's like letting them know that they're like. Uh, that there's you know there's a reason Ahsoka stepped away from her and then um you know she tries to tell Ahsoka to be like maybe you should you know bring Sabine back you know like she she does in the, all the grunt work of like getting them back together I think uh which is cool cuz yeah. she's like the mother figure of Star Wars Rebels and that's kind of continuing now which is great yeah i i have in my uh in my notes too so not only like I, after that whole scene, we go back and we see Ahsoka go to um, back where Azra lives, back where Sabine lives. She Ahsoka then uses again uh, Force Echo, mm-hmm. and that's it's just really cool. I really like seeing these other types of because fo- she literally does it. She she touches like where the battle was, and she could hear what happened, and that is like I mean if that's not a direct reference to it, I don't know what it is because mm-hmm. like that's just so right on par uh we also i also have in my notes that like the comedy in this show is like super sitcom mm. and like i'm here for well, i forget what happened but it was like ahsoka and her are talk ahsoka and hera are talking and something like falls down and she's like oh <laughs> and i was like god damn it this is so goofy but god this is like so on par for like rebels, like it's so rebels it hurts. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like uh, there is so I cannot wait till Zeb shows up. We ain't straight up talk shit to. Sabine. Oh yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Oh my that was god, great. I mean, we got totally skipped over that part, dude. Oh my god, Yu Yang was like, "Yo, Soka, you are yo Sabine. Maybe have you tried not sucking?" Yeah, he because you suck. He's great. He's like the best <laughs> version of C three PO. If C three PO wasn't it, a little a he huge wishes, bitch. He wishes. He yeah, could be this it was so funny because literally Sabine's like, uh, I just don't know if I'm cut out for this. And he's like, Yeah, you're not. Like you, you're literally, you literally have the worst force abilities that I've yeah. ever seen. I've been around since before Vietnam. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you, you might die if you don't do these things. So. Been around since the freaking big bang i just think that (laughs) there's like she has such she's kind of given up on her own like journey to become like bettering herself because everybody around her kind of left so like it's gonna i would i would love to see her um or make hu yang eat his words and come back and be a a really good jedi duo with ahsoka later on the series because it's like yeah he's he really did explain to everybody like yeah, man, maybe if you stop sucking, you Mm -hmm. will be effective. And I kind of get Ahsoka being an asshole to her because apparently they both walked out on each other, but for this exact reason where Sabine thought that she could do whatever she wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Ahsoka thinking, oh, she's just going to fail anyway. So basically they both failed each other, but Hugh Yang's super real for that whole (laughs) whole thing. All right, so... Hera and Ahsoka go to Corellia, right? And they figure out that there's a bunch of unchecked Imperials just still loyal to the Empire, presumably just anywhere. And they find some at this uh, sh- this shipping... I don't even know what it is, like some kind of factory or whatever. Um, anyway, they some dude... Spills the beans right away when you, when they start figuring things out. He's like, "For the empire," <laughs> which is oh, well, so Bef- stupid. Before that happens, though, uh, what? Morgan Elizabeth gets the map and unlocks it and shows kind of a little yeah. bit where this is that, and we get the name of where they're at right now. They're in Paradia. Paradia. Paradia is where Thrawn is. is where, yeah, this is where Thrawn is. So now okay. we have an actual, we have a name to the galaxy place. 
Yeah, we don't know. At. We don't know yet. I think that there. I do want to kind of go into like a little bit of theory here. So it's like Morgan Elsbeth is communicating with Thrawn. I assume through this like black magic sort of thing, mm -hmm. and is like I don't know what kind of thing that because it seems like all Night Sisters have this weird form of communication. We remember. Um, Mother Tal is Talzin. Talzin, like communicating with Dooku with like that weird, like ghostly, uh, ghastly green presence. Mm -hmm. And it's, I almost feel like it's the same way of like how a lot of the Jedi have these nightmares, or not these nightmares, but these dreams and like, like, uh, can sense people. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like what Sabine had earlier in the, in the first episode when she was asleep. She had the dreams of like hearing Ezra. And I think that in that same way, we're seeing a deliberate uh, interaction between Morgan Elsbeth and Thrawn. And that's how she kind of has an idea of where he's at. And that's how they got put on this whole thing. So mm -hmm. kind of interesting, kind of interesting. Now, back to Corellia. Um. So, yeah, they go and figure that out, figure out there's Imperials there. Um, and then... Uh, there's some good action on Corellia. Ahsoka fights Merrick, who's a former Inquisitor, and she kills a bunch more droids, too, I think. But more importantly, we get Hera and Chopper in the Phantom, which is oh smaller. We haven't seen the Ghost yet. The Ghost is Hera's ship, right? But the Phantom is, like, the smaller ship that is attached to it, so she can, like, detach. Members of her crew can detach yes. that and fly around. So they're in the, they're in the Phantom. And we get some classic, like, Hera and Chopper stuff where, you know, Chopper is just like, did you touch my stuff? And she's like, I didn't it's touch so your funny. shit. He's like, where the fuck is it? And she's like, did you check under the battery? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, can we just blow him out of the sky? And then she's like, no, there's no kill civilians. He's like, fine. No, 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 no. He says, and what's wrong with that? Yeah. So <laughs> I love, uh, yeah, they're they, they are doing oh, Chopper. Oh, God. Chopper is like seamlessly transitioned oh, into live action. Like I you can't Chopper. even you can't even tell. Like it's like, a different character. You know, <laughs> cool it, Chop. Like yeah. uh, that's what I was talking about. Like that was the interaction that I think we're in. when when the entire gang gets yeah. together again. Like it's gonna be this might be the most fun thing we've seen in live action Star Wars to this day. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see Zeb. Ezra, Sabine, and Hera just yeah. having an interaction. Imagine them all on the ghost, and then Hera being like, get to the gun. Oh, dude, it's going to be so good. They're literally yeah. going to be zooming back and forth how they do in Rebels, and I'm here for it. I cannot wait to see those. I think that I do want to say, though, before, not to get too ahead of myself. I don't think, yeah, I think you're putting the cart before the horse. <laughs> I, I don't know. know if we're going to see any I know, of that. I know, I know, but I think, I think we're going to see Zeb. And Hera and Chopper Maybe. and Sabine all together on on the on the ghost. There's no, they're not gonna fucking uh, rise a Jedi us or last Jedi us. I think it will kill all these people off. There ain't no way that's gonna happen. It'll probably happen like toward the very end if it does happen. Um, when there, whenever there's like a big battle with Thrawn's forces, hopefully that happens. I don't know. I don't see it happening anytime soon though, because I'm I'm pretty sure Hera and Chopper are not gonna be like in every episode, which sucks, but. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. I don't know. I think that they're all going to be main characters. Either way, I still want to see that, and I still think that we, as fans, are in. Hopefully, ho if it does, let's just say if it does happen, like I guarantee it's going to like kind of break the internet because it's going to be just such a fun thing, and people are going to be like, "This is the family. This is the family. Mm -hmm. This is what Star Wars was made for." You know what I'm talking about? Like George Lucas saying that Star Wars is for family. And goddamn, like for real, like that is gonna be that's gonna be it. So I, I just can't wait. But this interaction with Chopper and Hera, like it was, it was so, it was, it was so good. I don't know. It's if you love Rebels and you love this show, like you know, that gave you everything you wanted. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? So Chopper throws a tracking device on the thing, and I love his reaction to it. He, like, spins around and he flexes, <laughs> which is great. I love how he has arms. It gives him so much, gives them so much more opportunity to, like, have give him a personality. It's great. Yeah. Um, so toward the end, so that ship there they were trying to stop was actually, like, one of the hyperdrives for this thing called the Eye of Scion, which is the massive ship that they're building to go to... Um, 
what, the the other galaxy Peridia or whatever. Um, they they built this thing pretty freaking fast. Um, That's what I was thinking. Nobody nobody thought. Yeah, They're whoever just, just whoever dying. lives on Cetos is what the planet is constructed over. They're slacking hard. Um, I mean, also like Corellia shipyard building this giant well, that's the thing. drive thing. Not one person was like. Well, I think that's a, like sort of like what goes into this. Like, there's probably a lot of people that are still like loyal to the Empire. Yeah. Like, remember when the dudes like, ah, you know, sh tomato, tomato. You know, the workers they don't care as long as they get paid. I mean, he's just like covering up the fact that like everybody at that factory is an Imperial like, <laughs> like sympathizer. Here. Yeah. That's Meanwhile, they're all like looking at her like, is that a fucking Jedi? <laughs> you, know, like, you brought one of them <laughs> so, around I think, here? I think like once Thrawn comes back, it's like, it's kind of going to be a, a freaking problem because there's a lot of Imperial sympathizers, it seems like. Absolutely. Uh, during um, during this whole, like, or after that, like, while when Hera and Chopper are fighting up in the sky, like, Ahsoka versus Merrick was awesome too that was, was like that fight. was like prequel level five choreography it was a pretty good fight like i was down when they both used um when ahsoka used merrick to, to push through that droid mm -hmm. like that was awesome and then at the very end of the fight we both thought that he was going to take off on his yeah his yeah, I, yeah i'm i don't think they're gonna do that with him i, I thought about i thought that i they, thought they were thought in that scene to. like because he needed to like jump high and stuff but he just ended up throwing it and like forcing it back to him which is really lame thought that Dave like was you guys sneak that in there, you guys don't have the balls to do the inquisitor copter <laughs> I thought that that was gonna happen. The Inquisicopter. That would have been so funny, man. I, I, I don't even know. I would have freaked out if they did it because that not only would I that think have been funny as shit, but like it's just so unnecessary. You know, you know they thought about it, but they were probably like, "This is way too cartoonish somebody, for what we're trying there, to do here." Like, I would have loved to see Dave and like it was probably John that told him no. Uh, yeah, Dave's like, somebody. How about we have them? We have the the the, the saber copter again. Yeah. And John's like, eh, no. Yeah, they definitely. <laughs> how about how about he just throws it, and then it comes back like the saber copter. <laughs> like, All right, fine. fine. Yeah, you know he was pushing hard for that. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So, and then back on Lothal, Sabine is uh, recovered, and then we get a great like parallel scene of. Um, her cutting her hair, which is it's shot in the exact same way that Kanan cuts his hair in Rebels. For those of you that don't know, Kanan is the guy who died in Rebels. He was the Jedi who was like the the father of the Rebels crew and Hera's boyfriend. Um, and there's a scene where he cuts his hair exactly like that with the knife sitting on like this wooden table in front of him and grabs it and just, just for some reason did not slice a single thing on his face, even though head. he's blind and cutting his entire beard without <laughs> without a scratch on his face. He would have done well in Catholic high school. Um, hey. So that was a really cool scene. Um, and then Sabine finally puts her armor back on and she we get the same shot from the end of Rebels where she's walking into where the uh, the mural is of the ghost crew. And she like touches Ezra's face, and she's wearing the same. So this is like this, literally the same scene shot again. And Ahsoka is standing behind her, and they go and they're gonna go do adventures together. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it was it was beautiful. It was a beautiful couple of episodes, I have to say. It was Thanks. it was amazing. Um, this is the first time in a long time that I'm that I I literally cannot wait. Mm -hmm. to watch the next episode of this like yeah, i don't I i'm pretty hyped the, the last time that i felt like this was had to have been season two of the mandalorian the episode before luke shows up i knew somebody was going to show up and i was like here for it you know? yeah so like yeah absolutely uh what would you rank what would you rank these the uh, first episode and second episode probably together collectively 9.4 out of 10 Okay, okay, I give them both, like, 9.7s. They're yeah. both of them. They were pretty fantastic. I would say the first, ep the first episode's, like, a 9.7. Second episode's, like, a 9.2. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, I mean, it just felt so movie-like. It set up a lot of things. I would say for the people who, let me go into this a little bit, like, for the people who haven't watched Rebels or haven't watched Clone Wars or are just tuning in, mm -hmm. like, I could totally see how some of the criticism is like 
some of these relations are explained. Like Hera and Sabine seems kind of dry if you never, if you never watch Rebels, you know. Like, mm-hmm. and you see Ahsoka, Ahsoka and Sabine. Like, we haven't seen that on screen, but like we both, we all kind of like get the whole like uh, master and apprentice sort of thing from mm-hmm. everything that we watch of Star Wars. So I can understand why the reluctant master thing doesn't really come all that well across because we people don't know who ahsoka is you know they don't understand why wouldn't she want to train this person you know Mm. so like and then the 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 when she brings up anakin like and if you don't understand clone wars and you watched it and when she says she walks away from uh walked away from anakin it's like you're not who knows (laughs) you know she's not getting the full picture you know you're getting a distorted view of everything um so yeah, definitely go watch Rebels and Clone Wars if you haven't seen it before watching Ahsoka. But if you're just jumping in, it's fine too. We're here to uh, bridge the gap for you, uh, yeah. <laughs> fill in all those blanks. Yeah. So um, okay, let's uh, let's go over like our um, predictions. Predictions for the next episode. What do you um, what do you think is going to happen? Do you have any uh, sort um, of ideas? I think the theories? next episode for sure that fight between Balin Skull and Ahsoka is going to happen. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm curious to see where this thing goes. Like, so it, they're presume they're going to that ship is going to Peridia or whatever yeah. for, to this other galaxy soon, probably the next episode because in the trailer Thrawn is in the trailer. Like Thrawn, they're going to get Thrawn in the next one or episode four. Like in the first half of this season, we're gonna see him. So I'm I don't know how they're gonna handle like. The bad guys are going to the, that place. Like, are they all going to be on that ship together? Like, are Ahsoka and Sabine going to infiltrate the ship when it before it gets out into hyperspace? I don't. I don't know. It's it's going to be very interesting to see how this shakes out. Like, is is Ray Stevenson going to die in the next? Like, is Ahsoka going to kill Ray Stevenson's character in the next episode? Maybe. Like, maybe that would give a lot more a lot of motivation to Shin to just go full on Sith. You know? I mean, it would it would thicken the plot pretty yeah. significantly if that happens. It would actually be kind of interesting to see Mer- Merrick kill Shin and then have Merrick be like, take me on as the real, as the real like, uh, apprentice for you. And then Balin be like, then Balin turns ultimately bad, bad, you know? Yeah. And Balin kills both of them and then it's like, fuck it, I'm killing everybody now, you know? I don't think, like, I from think what I've seen... Cool. From what I've seen, I think Balin is a pretty reserved guy. <laughs> like that's what, I'm, but that's what I'm saying. That's what would throw him over the edge of like you know this whole mm-hmm. bullshit. Like maybe he doesn't get his way in some way, and then Merrick's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna show him that I'm worth it." Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just some dumb shit like that. I think that would be kind of side character yeah. motivation. I think Merrick make. is gonna die pretty soon. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna. Uh, I man, don't think he's got a big arc ahead of him. My, my man, how, what, what was my dark? He's gonna be the guy who shows up the next episode, takes off his mask, and he's gonna be like, "Do you remember killing me, he's Ahsoka?" Gonna, he's gonna look like Bad Luck Brian underneath <laughs> there. He's gonna look like a, such a nerd or something you know I'm telling you, it's cal dark. castus that's who it is under there. that no way dude, that would be <laughs> insane i don't know if i would like that i would not like that I well no that, like that that was just a joke <laughs> that would that, that would yeah. make no sense so um, my my predictions for this next episode are going to be that uh ahsoka is going to go find this place uh that him and her and balin are going to fight but then she's going to get over powered by like him and the three other or the shin and merrick are both gonna fight her as well she's gonna get overpowered probably captured and i think that sabine's gonna like reach out to her through the force and then she's gonna like hey uh hera we gotta go we gotta go get to the ship Mm -hmm. hera chopper sabine all go and i don't know maybe they pick up zeb and then they go and they're going to do the same thing that they've done a bunch of times where they park the ghost right on the ship. And then they're going to zoom off the hyperspace. And in the meanwhile, we'll get like them infiltrating the ship, trying to like find whoever. And then, I don't know, maybe we get this like crazy, uh, we find out that Ezra's on the ship or something like that. And that's how Morgan Elspeth is like communicating with Thrawn because they're used. They they put Ezra in this like chromatose space stasis sort of thing, and that's how they like got got him. I don't know. 
Something like that. That's how I feel. They had the introduce. It's, we're gonna be three episodes. Got in. big ideas, kids. It's gonna. We're gonna be three episodes in. I think that you gotta get. You gotta get the group together. You gotta introduce people into it. You gotta get them emotionally. I think a, like, I think a good way. Invented. I think a good way to get like the crew back together is like they're gonna do that scene where Hera like goes to the New Republic and is like, we need to start like. Oh yeah. Getting probably. ready for Thrawn coming back, and they're gonna be like, nah. While well, we're peaceful now, and then that's when. Harris probably gonna call every like Zeb and everybody together yeah. like, okay, we guys have to do this ourselves <laughs> like, so I don't know who else. maybe they're gonna call Hondo, uh, oh, yeah. Visago. <laughs> Dude, if Hondo shows up, I will shit my pants. That would be so funny. <laughs> He's gonna be like, oh, Ferezra. Okay, yeah. fine, fine. We I'm... must find my friend. He's gonna. He's, He's gonna... my business partner. <laughs> they're gonna find him like on a beach planet, and he's yeah. gonna be like. I'm retired. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't do this no Him more. and that uh, Ugnot guy. Yeah. Like, oh, me, we got married. <laughs> like, yeah. we're, we're, we're no longer smugglers. We're peaceful bartenders. Yeah. Like, that's going to be how they, they introduce that. Honda would I, definitely have, like, a swim-up tiki bar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're going to be on They're gonna be on that planet that Cassie and Andor tried to, like, escape to. When he was yeah, like, like, one that's exactly six. what I was picturing when the uh, that droid throws him up against the wall. Jeez. I was like, this is Space Florida. Yeah. We're in Space Florida. That's literally, they're at a resort. <laughs> that was so, that was too meta for me. That that whole that whole part of that whole show, that was, like, that was too real. <laughs> yeah, that's like, pretty funny. It's like, oh, God, they're in Space Florida. <laughs> Space Ron DeSantis is canceling them. Like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, Do you yeah. have anything else? Uh, no, I don't. All I have is that I hope you guys like this video. Hope you uh, like it. Hope you subscribe. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of videos coming out this week, so please go and look at our videos on YouTube. If you're just listening to us on Spotify, make sure you uh, subscribe or follow whatever it is on there. We're on TikTok. T F T O R Pod. I believe. At T-F-T-O-R at pod. T-O, yeah, there we go. We're T-F-T-O-R pod at t- on TikTok. We have 62 followers on there, so keep keep following us on there. Like Instagram, too. We're on Instagram, too, by the way, at Tales from the Outer Rim. That's uh, that's growing. I put a bunch of memes on there a lot of times. A bunch of people comment. They're like Naruto memes. They're like Naruto memes slash Star Wars memes. It's, it's on there. Let's go check it out. Uh, anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one, guys. Peace.